Hi everybody. Um, I just felt to do a um, a video about the coming year, 2022. It's a very auspicious year. So um, I'm planning on knocking off and taking a Christmas break tomorrow. Not necessarily Christmas, but whatever. Um, and so I just thought, thought this would be a good time to share my thoughts on the coming year and why it is so special. So let's first of all look at the numerology. Two is about cooperation and balance. So, you know, the time of doing things on our own in isolation is over. And it's because we've been coming up to this very auspicious portal of 222 that um, there has been uh, a leveraging of division and imposed isolation, but nothing can stop us coming together in unity in the year 2022. And that's very much the ethos of the Aquarian age. So in March, when the sun transits through Pisces, we're likely to see big endings because Pisces is the final sign of the zodiac. It's the sign of the last 2000 year astrological age that we've been in. So we've been kind of being put through our finals exams the last two years to um, you know, learn the lesson of Pisces, which is to transcend duality, which is seeing things in good and bad, black and white, higher and lower. Um, in other words, seeing things from the solar plexus, from the rational mind. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a pivotal year, a year of very big change, 2022. So it's kind of like the last two years have been a gestation in preparation for this. So if we think about, um, you know, uh, two, it's, it's about people finding their power through coming together. And my late astrology teacher, um, Warwick Sayer, he used to speak about trans-Pluto, which um, hadn't been discovered, but it's the opposite energy of Pluto. And Pluto, it finds power through blowing things apart. And when Pluto was discovered in our solar system, that's when we were exploring atomic energy and just blowing shit up. <laughs> and likewise, we've blown apart the family unit. Um, just so much of our structures of society have been blown apart ever since Pluto was discovered. So now we're coming into the time of trans-Pluto, which is finding our power through community, yeah, through communion, through the power of union. So that's, um, you know, what this portal of 2022 is about. So um, I'm going to speak now about uh, relationships and relating because two it puts a real focus on relationships. So 2022 will be a year when a lot of people start new partnerships, leave partnerships, you know, and it's going to be highlighting our relationship lessons. So um, I'll just um, do a little bit of a preamble first. So there's three... I suppose you'd call them levels. I don't really want to get hierarchical, but um, levels of, of relating, okay, of relationships. The first is a soulmate union. Now, um, this is somebody that we have known in another incarnation, and there is unfinished business, okay? So things perhaps didn't end well, or there was uh, wounds, that were, um, you know, perpetrated on each other in a previous incarnation that never resolved. And so when we meet a soulmate, there's a sense of family or home or haven't I known you before or I feel like I've known you forever. And this is somebody that our soul compels us to journey with in order to try and resolve past uh, karmic lessons. And in the Piscean age, Pisces is very much about karma because 
being the final sign on the zodiac. It's about completing our karmic lessons. So a lot of us, you know, in the last two years have had um, old flames come out of the woodwork, you know, past loves as an opportunity to resolve past karma or um, look at how far you've come. You know, you might be uh, tempted to go back into an old dance with an old partner only to realize, no, I've outgrown this, you know. So um, soulmate unions were probably the most common uh, partnership dynamic during the Piscean age where we came together to try and resolve our past lessons. Now, those that are in soulmate unions currently, the questions to be asking yourself are what are my karmic lessons? So how do we identify that? What are the repeated patterns that I'm doing in relationship? Whether it's with this person, whether it's with past loves, yeah, what am I finding that, you know, are the same old familiar groundhog kind of dances, yeah? And we stay stuck in that when we scapegoat the other person, okay? Because that's the easy way. We don't have to look at our own part in the dance, right? Much harder to actually turn and face our shadow and ourselves. And that's where the next level of partnership comes in. That's the twin flame. And I know there's a lot of conjecture about twin flames and soulmates. Um, so, you know, really as with anything, really feel into what resonates as true within your heart, within your bones, your body, because the body is the barometer of the soul. Truth resonates with us or it doesn't sit right. It doesn't feel right in our body. So with this information, with any information, I encourage you to do that as your own inner authority. So my understanding of twin flame relationships is that this is um, somebody, a soul that we have a significant soul contract with. They are still a soulmate, okay, but they are somebody who um, is in our life, not necessarily for a long amount of time. There were a lot of soulmates, um, twin flames coming together around 2011, and I'll explain why in a moment. But twin flames are in our lives to um, bring up where we're out of balance, okay? Because the 11 being is the master being. What do I mean by that? Somebody who has raised the twin serpents within themselves. These are the meridians of sacred feminine and sacred masculine consciousness that are dormant within the base of the spine, within the nervous cord. And when we're initiated um, into the ancient um, the grail um, practices called the descent of Ishtar or Inanna and the descent of Orpheus, and these are initiation paths for men and women to descend down into the subconscious, into the underworld, and to um, see the shadow and the light. So the strengths and the weaknesses of each of the seven faces of the feminine and the masculine that together comprise the psyche, which means soul. Because we're all feminine, masculine, and we're all multifaceted. So these archetypes these seven faces of the god and the goddess um, they uh, together comprise our soul so when we understand and empower these different facets we activate these meridians these serpents of light the twin flame within all right and that activates an internal intensification of kundalini which is serpent power or dragon power and that um, purifies okay so we get put through an acceleration of karmic lessons like being in a crucible you know just like a a um, sword is forged in very very intense heat uh, we are forged and accelerated into a new level of awareness through the meeting with the twin flame so twin flame relationships are often very intense. 
they're often um you know feeling like i i um can't live with you but i can't live without you and i've i've done videos about this many years ago on my youtube channel but also my book creating sacred union within which is available on my website moonwoman.com um I speak about this in a lot more detail, and it's also a template for activating the master being, the, the sacred marriage within, which is the preparation for the meeting with the beloved. And I'll get to that in just a sec. So with the twin flame, there is an intensity, okay? And the reason for that is the serpents, uh, they, they get activated. There's often a very intense sexual magnetic erotic attraction to the twin flame um, bordering on the po point of sort of obsessive compulsion or addictive love and it's because um, the the work that these souls have come together to do is so important okay that it has to happen even though it's sometimes excruciating and the reason for that is you know the serpents rise and they, um, they come together in the base and they literally, like the serpent's fangs, they prick the, the base chakra and they bring up all of the shadow, all of the unacknowledged aspects that you haven't seen in yourself. And they bring it up because they're often your extreme polar opposite, all right, which is why the attraction is so intense. If we think about magnets, opposites attract. So the role of the twin flame is to um, basically show you your shadow, um, the parts of yourself that or your unexpressed potential. So that's your strengths as well as your weaknesses, that which you have been blind to in yourself, which you need to see in order to become whole. So, um, you know, that's um, something a lot of people have been journeying in the preparation for the year 2022. Now, this is an opportunity for those who have done the, the inner work and the preparatory work. Um, this is a time of the beloveds coming together. Now, what is a beloved? Well, another name for them is the divine complement. So this is another being who has awakened the twin serpents, which in the energy field is the caduceus, which has been appropriated as the medical symbol, but it's the, the twin serpents on the central pillar, the nervous cord. And this is a being who is whole. Now, it doesn't mean they're perfect, all right? We're all perfectly imperfect so long as we're in a body, but it means that there is a level of awareness of one's archetypal selves, both feminine and masculine, at each of the seven gates. So one identifies as a multi-dimensional soul. Okay, they're not basing their identity just on, you know, one or two uh, aspects. You know, this is somebody who um, is operating at all seven levels of their soul. So Famous beloveds have been couples like, you know, Sheba and Solomon or Yeshua and Mari or King Arthur and Queen Guinevere. You know, these are legendary lovers, all right? These are partnerships that embody the holy couple. And what is the holy couple? Well, these are beings that have come together as two 11 master beings, those that have awakened the masculine and feminine and found a balance within those polarities themselves. So they're like the high priest king and the high priestess queen, all right? And in the ancient advanced civilizations of Mesopotamia and Egypt, you know, one didn't get to become a queen or a king unless you had also done the awakening of serpent power of kundalini in the mystery schools in the temples and that's why you know the egyptians had the, the cobra insignia on their their headdresses because it identified that they had raised their um their consciousness to a point where they could be responsible with power and not abuse their power 
So the holy couple, when they come together, it's the frequency of 22. In numerology, 22 is the master builder. So what are we doing in 2022? We're going to create the new earth. And the new earth is going to be created through love. When beloveds come together, their manifestation powers are exponential. And they initiate each other through the heros gamos, through the practice of sacred union in alignment with the seasonal vortices of the earth. They anchor um, heaven on earth into the geomagnetic uh, grid of the earth um, through um, invoking the god and the goddess through their vessels and um, sending that energy um, through the climax into the grid of the earth to literally help to balance the polarities of feminine, masculine, light and shadow on the earth plane within the group mind and within um, the physicality of our earth mother. So these in the grail tradition were known as dragon kings, dragon queens, um, those that would be journeying the path of um, the heroes Gamos. And this is why the sacred kings of old had dragons tattooed on them and they were buried on the dragon lines in honor of the service that they had done uh, for the mother, the earth mother. So this is a very auspicious year that we're coming up to. So um, if we think about the year 2022, it's got three twos in it, which adds up to six. What is six? The visionary, the number of harmony, the number of the heart chakra, okay? Yes, it's the fourth chakra, but it's symbolized by the six-pointed star, which is a perfect um, integration of the holy trinity of um, you know, the divine masculine, the Holy Father, Holy Spirit, Holy Son, and the sacred feminine. So the triple face goddess, maiden mother crone, you know. So it's the coming together of sacred feminine, sacred masculine, which is why there has been such an acceleration of um, destructive programming in the precursor to this to try and anchor fear. But fear is no match for love. So this coming year, all our challenges is to go through the portal of the heart, to shift from the solar plexus, which is fussing about who's right and wrong, and come back to the heart, to what is my heart compelling me to do? Because when we're governed by the heart, we are sacred sovereigns, and it is that energy that is going to create a new paradigm on our garden planet. And it is our destiny, okay? It is written. It's not something that um, can be sabotaged. And I speak more about that in my video presentation, Shift into the Light. Uh, we are expecting a solar event that will assist to shift the group mind from the solar plexus into the heart in the year 2022. Um, my feeling is we're going to get that around the 6th of June, which adds up to 666. And again, I speak to that in the shift into the light. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a time when the light will prevail. So, you know, I did a video yesterday to support those in the Northern Hemisphere going through the darkest night. And I just felt to, to see this awareness, to know that, um, it's always darkest before the dawn and what we're moving into is a time unparalleled where we will create motivated by love and I mean pure love not love that's based on need and dependency you know if you do this for me I'll do this for you um, that's not love that's codependency but devotional love when we are moved to serve Okay, as the resurrected God, the resurrected goddess, the hero, one who has been to hell and back, and then, you know, like Hercules, just wants to focus on alleviating the suffering of those souls that are trapped in the underworld and don't know how to get out, which is 
by and large, the majority of souls here on the earth plane right now. And Capricorn, you know, as I'm filming this, the sun's moved into Capricorn now and it'll be in Cappy for the whole solar month. And this is the sign of the world savior. And in the ancient world, there wasn't just one savior. Okay, and I speak about this in my book on the grail. The Holy Grail was the rite of passage to awaken the world saviour in every man and Rome distorted that, um, which has had, you know, serious ramifications for the earth and her children. So um, there is a special on my book at the moment. If you are feeling curious, you can pre-order the Kindle version for just 99 cents as a sale on until the 25th of December, Christmas Day, because it exposes the true origins of Christmas and how that's been distorted and why. So when you pre-order, you get instant access to the three um, first three chapters, and then the rest of the book uh, will be available, the official launch on the 22nd of the 2nd, 2022, because it is about stewarding our return to love by mapping the ancient religion of love um, prior to the empires, which was the grail. So uh, have a beautiful festive season and, and safe New Year's and, yeah, celebrate love however you feel to do that. All right, thanks so much for watching and listening and feel free to share this if it resonates. Ciao for now. Figure out where to turn this off. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.